Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. Back in the 50s, if you drove a Chevy in the United States, or any country for that matter, you were the coolest kid on the block. And which model Chevy stands as one of the coolest? Find out on this week's Classic Restos. Keep them standard, take them down the custom road. Nothing quite lends itself better than a 57 Chevy. Here we have a Chevrolet 210, a two-door post car. Post meaning the B pillar right here and a door frame. Without these two items, the car would be known as a pillarless car. Up front in the GoGo -Go office, the general manager is a 355, with extra air entering via the top floor window through this P1 Pro Charger. This is a serious car. We're talking wheel spin capabilities at around 100 kilometres an hour. The board of directors have signed off with this one, with in excess of 600 horsepower, and enough torque to almost pull the road along with it. When General Motors executives wanted an all-new car for 57, Chief Engineer for Chevrolet Ed Cole insisted on a number of changes that in some ways were to pave the way for the automotive future. From a numbers standpoint, the 57 Chevrolet wasn't as popular as General Motors had hoped. Despite its popularity, rival Ford outsold Chevrolet for the 1957 model year for the first time since 1935. The main cause of the sales shift to Ford was that the 57 Chevrolet had tubeless tyres, the first car to have them. This scared away sales to Ford, as many people did not initially trust the new tubeless design. There were many options available, leaving other worldly manufacturers at the time in the dust. In 1957, air conditioning was offered, as was a padded dash. If you worked overtime that week, power steering and power brakes could have been for you. A signal seeking AM radio and power antenna. Power windows and power seats were also available. A rear speaker with its own volume knob in the dashboard. Headlights could be dipped via an Autronic Eye. Even an electric shaver connected to the dashboard was available. Yep, only in America. For 1957, there were four standard engine options. The base engine was an inline six cylinder called the Blue Flame Six, hosting 235 cubes. A 265 cube V8, aptly titled Turbo Fire, producing 162 horsepower. And of course, there were two other V8s to choose from, wearing the same displacement. A 283 Turbo Fire twin barrel and a Super Turbo Fire four barrel. 1957 was also the first year to introduce mechanical fuel injection. My first memories of cars would have been at a very young age, early six, mid 60s, growing up in South Taranaki. Um, a lot of English cars around in those days, but when you saw an American car come through, Man, that was, that was all code. She was, <laughs> what the hell was that, you know? Yeah. And it was cool. I mean, um, car culture then was, was actually growing. When I was about 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there, I used to go out and stay at my uncle's farm. He was at a dairy farm, and I used to go out there and stay on the holidays, and he had this big old Ford flat deck V8, flathead V8 thing. You know, and he used to take all the milk to the factory on it, put the cans on, take it down to the factory, and used to go with him every morning. And we'd bring the way back for the pigs, and he'd pull up outside the house, and we'd go in for breakfast, and and I'd be chomping at the bit, and he'd still be reading the paper, and <laughs> you know, and I said, "Oh, the hell with this! I'll go and shift the truck myself," you know. And I was only ten years old, I hardly reached the pedals and see over the steering wheel. My first 
memory of an American car would have been a, a early model Chevrolet uh, 50, 52 Chevy, you know, they were, um, a lot of farmers had them, no one else could afford to buy them or, or even run them, you know, um, the odd professional person had them, so I guess that leads us to um, this car we've got out here, um, 57, I, I acquired this off Rhys Humphreys who, who did most of the work on it. He's, he's built it up to, as, you, as you see it now, today. Um, it drives very well. It's got um, different suspension in it, heavier sway bars, which, which makes it handle and drive a lot better than a standard car. It's just a, um, a 210 with some Ballier trim on it. Um, it does very well with uh, the engine that we've got in it and the, and the transmission. It's a real sleeper. It turns a lot of heads. A lot of people hear it coming before they see it. And of course you get people turning around and as you're driving past you get the thumbs up, you know. <laughs> it's cool, it's a cool car to drive. It's got a, um, a fast fuel injection system on it that's Finally got that working okay, we've tuned her in now, so, um, and it makes it easier to drive, yeah, even with all the horsepower it's got. The car fraternity here is amazing. There's that many people around here with cars that you wouldn't realise are here. Um, and especially since Americana's taken hold of the town um, and yourself you know when classic restos came here 10 years ago to start filming this thing the interest in the cars and and how classic restos have exposed this thing it, it's really amazing yeah people have just taken hold of it and, and run with it My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. If you have a restoration project, Hare and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hare and Forbes has the range. Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Fern Tree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours?
1951, there were big changes for Buick. It was an interesting year. Sales dropped to around 400,000 cars. On August 8th, 1951, Buick built its one millionth Dynaflow transmission. In 1951, the design was nothing less than the finest from Harley Earl. The car was referred to as a C-body platform and full-size. These flowing panelled cars were 2 metres wide and stood proud at 1.6 metres tall. They weighed in around 1,700 to 2,000 kilos, pending rank, determining the quantity of options and engines. The venti ports, synonymous to Buick, helped ventilate the engine compartment. But somewhere along in 1949, these were plugged. Combined with a bombsite mascot, the venti ports put the driver in an imaginary fighter plane position. And of course on this special episode featuring Morris Doyle in New Plymouth with his incredible 1957 Chev, well, his brother Max found out. Now, Max wants to jump on the bandwagon and be on the episode as well. So, a little bit of a drive about an hour south of New Plymouth in the Taranaki region down to a place called Howrah. We're at Max's place and this is Max's shed. And behind Max's door, there's something in there that really is an eye-opener. My first memory of a classic car would be possibly when I started playing soccer at primary school and dad was interested in it and we went away on soccer trips on the weekend every Saturday morning we were going away to soccer and I suppose that would be my first pretty much big memory of playing soccer and getting all the mates and soccer team in the car travelling away on a Saturday morning to play soccer. So yeah, I suppose that's probably where it really, really started. This 51 has been in the family since 1968. It was my dad's car, our family car. It's just got a huge emotional attachment to me. I just, no way would I ever sell it. There's no way, I don't even think I'd ever consider a ridiculous offer on it. It's just got huge emotional attachment. My mum's still alive. She's passionate about it and uh, I've been passionate about it ever since. I have a first memory of this car, so yeah, it's just, it's just that family contact and family connection with this car that means so much to me. Since I bought this, I had no real mechanical connection with with cars. I was I wasn't mechanically minded, but because I took this project on, I've learned so much, um, and and I've got the bug a little bit now that this car now is finished on the road and I've been driving, and getting all this enjoyment out of it. It's, um, it's given me a bit of a bug, so I've, um, I've always thought after I'd got this 51 on the road that I would consider getting another project and, and uh, trying to do my own thing with it. But my promise was to my dad, before he passed away, that I'd restore the Buick to an original condition, and he was fine with that. And so now that I've done that and I've accomplished that, and I'm pretty proud of this car, I'd like to um, get another project and do something of my own with it. Uh, what does the classic car movement in New Zealand mean to me? Um, it's massive in the fact that people are restoring cars and giving them a new life. You know, I'd, I'd, it, it means so much to everybody to, to keep these cars on the road. Um, we're looking at um, cars changing, the evolution of technology and that going into electric and we're thinking petrol cars might be going off the scene so much with but I think classic cars it's got to be it's got to be kept alive, the bug's got to be kept alive and if we all go electric one day and we haven't got any petrol powered classic cars around we've got no history left have we? So it's just about the history Fletch, it's the, the history of these classic cars means so much to people people can bring can bring memories back of, of their childhood and and that's that's the biggest thing about this car here it just brings so many memories about my childhood back to me 
And there's no doubt that vehicles such as this deserve to be with Shannon's. And if you have anything to do with a classic bike, car or truck club, make sure it's listed with the Shannon's Club for all the world to see. Find out more information when you visit shannons.com.au. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's Home and Contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. It's Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems. Finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Yeah, it's time for Max. Welcome to today's show, Max. Hey, welcome. Thanks very much, Fletch. Yeah. That's all right, mate. Yeah. Thanks for that. Now, I did visit here. It was a couple of years ago. I, I forget riding on the wall there. Okay. Yeah, well, it was two years ago, so, you know, you're two years older. You might be starting to not quite be up with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Max. Yeah, yeah, good on you. Um, well, it's nice to be back and uh, to feature yourself on today's show. And I kind of also uh, forgot how good this Buick was. It was a quick visit a couple of years ago, late one afternoon. I think you had a car cover over it at the time. Yep. Um, but seeing it sitting here in the barn this morning, it's just brought it all back. How beautiful this car is. Hey, well, thanks very much. You know, I just appreciate everybody's thoughts about it. And when it's coming from a car guy like you, then I really appreciate you saying things like that about it. So it, um, it just uh, makes me feel really grateful that I've put all that passion and money and time and into it and I get appreciation from people especially here. Yeah. Well I've seen a few cars Max. <laughs> okay. You know, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so you know you, you see something like this uh, and it, it, it's quite I guess a surprise to lift the door up of the barn and see that lurking inside. It's, it's really beautiful. When you look at the front of the car I can't help but think that it's the 48 215, the first Holden on steroids. You know, it's two metres wide, it's bigger than our Holden, but you could see where GMH at the time was inspired, where they got their shapes from, yep. um, from these American derivatives. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you're probably right in saying, saying that, you know. Seeing the 48, 49 Holdens, they do look similar in the grill, eh? I think what you've done with the restoration is fantastic. What was the original colour of the car? The original colour would have been gunmetal grey. And a factory right-hand drive car too, right? Yeah, factory right-hand drive, yeah. Uh, they, you know, these cars are assembled um, out of the American market for Canada or Australia. Now, your father bought this car in 1968. Yes. Uh, it must have been, well, here in Howrah or here in this area, there wouldn't have been too many of these getting around. Hell no. Hell no, um... Well, Dad had seven children, and uh, he needed a big car. He had no television. He had no television. Mm. Lots so, of lots of blackouts, power power outages, exactly. and, and hence 
hence the result was seven children. <laughs> so he needed he needed a big car. In terms of what powers it up front, the uh, the famous straight eight Buick, they're so known for that engine, aren't they? They are. They are, the straight eight. My brother Morris suggested to me, open the hood up. He says, the old guys will just love it. Yep. So I've done that in the last two years that I've done the Americana, mm. and the attraction that the old guys seem to yep. get out of seeing the straight eight yep. is it's just mind-blowing. We just... Well, they ran the straight eight for quite a few years. The, even well, the 39 had the straight eight. That's right. They did too. Max, I think in tribute to your father, this is absolutely beautiful to be driving his car. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's such a, it's been a car, it's been in Hara for 50 years. 1968 he bought it, so and we've all both lived here for that long. My dad's been passed away since 2003, but I've been here since 67. So it's a well-known car in this town, and there's a lot of people, a lot of dad's friends know the car and know that he cooked it and I've restored it after he passed away. Um, so it's uh, it, it's so cool to see all his old friends come back to it in car shows and see the car completely restored yeah. and say to me that your dad will be proud of you. Now that's what's really cool about it. That's beautiful mate. Absolutely beautiful. Well, yeah, Maxie, well, thank you for having me here today, uh, the invitation, and getting yourself on the show, and, I, and I'm glad that you did. It's the, it's the, uh, the Doyle Brothers episode, uh, yourself and, and, uh, and Brother Morris, and uh, boy, that 57 Chev, that's something in it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely it is. It's mm. a beautiful car. Yeah. Um, he hasn't let me drive it yet, yeah. so Fletch, I'm hoping you put a, put a pressure on him. <laughs> I, I haven't had the opportunity yeah. to drive that yet. Yeah. But I'm not joking, it is one of the quickest cars I've ever ever been in oh, it so is it is amazing so i've been told yeah and uh and and he's probably got good reason to not let me drive it for that reason yes max i think <laughs> you just should stay here in the barn and make your scones and um <clears throat> you might be safer yeah, yeah well yeah. well the the 51 here is a lot slower than the 57 yes. so i'm quite happy driving the 51 yes. rather yes. than the 57 so oh yeah. right, well thanks again max i certainly appreciate it oh, thank you fletch and uh we appreciate you coming here and having a look at our car and appreciating our car. Yep. So, yeah, thank you very much. That's my pleasure. Yeah. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, filmed here in New Zealand. Two brothers, two GM cars, and both Classic Restos. As I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.